Hello and welcome to my review of Sneaky Little Hobbitses. While I have seen all of the Peter Jackson movies, that's not necessarily a good indicator of what to expect from a book. So while I'm an avid fantasy reader, this is actually my first exposure to the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. So the plot is about Bilbo, a hobbit, a kind of half-sized human type creature, who joins up with a company of dwarves at the behest of the wizard Gandalf, and together they head to a distant land where they intend to fight a dragon to retrieve the Dwarven King's lost treasure and homeland. What's most interesting about that is that it's everything that's become a cliché about fantasy. Normally I would say, these days if I'm going to like a fantasy novel, it pretty much has to avoid all of them. They are walking to the plot, taking up more of the book than the actual plot, and the anthropomorphism of every kind of creature. But this novel dates back to 1937, so I'm going to assume that it's later, less talented writers, you know who you are, who have turned those into cliches and so abused them, because The Hobbit gleefully indulges them all and skips along, yes, skips, with a real verve. The gang of Hobbit, dwarves and wizard bump into all sorts of creatures, friends and foes along the way, which is a long way, it takes them many months, and along the route they escape from goblins, wolves and creepy spiders. Poor Bilbo, who loves his hobbit hole, his many lunches and all his creature comforts, is quite the fish out of water at first. I did rather enjoy his repeated mantra of him wishing for his bed, and Tolkien acknowledging its repetition with a tongue-in-cheek, and not for the first time. That isn't the only instance of a little humour either. I found his description of the invention of golf rather Terry Pratchett-esque. I do think that the writing style may not be for everyone. The Dickensian way the narrator constantly appeals to the reader directly with phrases such as you may remember and most likely you saw it some time ago and have been laughing at him may break immersion for some. It certainly gives things the feel of listening to a bedtime story and that's because this is very much a book aimed at children. Because of its target audience, the fighting foregoes realism and as such is very clean and innocuous. But that's not to say that you won't be engrossed and spending at least some of your time turning those pages over a little quicker than normal. Bilbo particularly is very easy to root for. Along the way, Tolkien even indulges in a fair amount of world building for a children's book, giving a taste of the history and politics, the interactions between the various races and what drives this colourful and interesting world. Every species, from the eagles to the wolves, are talking creatures with their own motivation and occasionally culture. It's much more in-depth than you might expect for both a children's tale and a book of this length. One thing I would question is them travelling all that way without any kind of plan for dealing with Smog, the dragon. Their plan required a burglar, apparently, but the treasure is so vast it would take him many lifetimes to remove it piece by piece, even if the presence of an angry dragon didn't dramatically reduce one's life expectancy. That and the eventual death of Smog were the only things that felt unsatisfactory to me. I felt having some semblance of a plan and it not working, and then them having to come up with an alternative on the fly, would have been much stronger and in keeping with the general theme of the book to that point, which was Gandalf or Bilbo generally solving problems through brains rather than brawn. While it's certainly not going to be everybody's cup of tea, I really rather enjoyed The Hobbit, which is one in the eye for anyone who's watched my other videos and thought, this guy doesn't like anything. Fun, occasionally funny, and sometimes quite thrilling, The Hobbit is much more than just a nostalgic curiosity, and as such, I'd highly recommend it to anyone with more than just a passing interest in fantasy. It's written with the same sort of heart and spirit as the first couple of installments of the Harry Potter series. If you like those, I'm sure you'll like this too. Thank you for listening. Check out some of my other videos if you like this one.